as he shared with him some instructions that would follow on after this introduction. But my, my attention this morning and our attention this morning will be uh, basically placed in verse number 5, and I'll read that for us again. The Bible says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. As we take a look at Timothy's faith, there's a number of things that we can see, even from just this one verse, and there's some other verses I'll point us to this morning, but I want to say this this morning, that uh, your faith is the most important possession that you have. And the Bible tells us that it is your faith uh, that allows you to please God. It's not your works that, that, that allow you to please God. It's not your talk that allows you to please God. But when you get down to the essence, what allows us to please God is our faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You might have good works, but they can't please God without faith. You might have a good conversation of life, but without faith, you can't please God with that manner of living. Uh, and so we look at that and, and understand this, that it's our faith that pleases God. And so I want to take a look at Timothy's faith today and say, we need to examine Timothy's faith and examine our faith in light of Timothy's faith and see how we compare. Uh, one, one of the things we see right off the bat is that Timothy had a special faith. He had a special faith. Uh, this faith uh, uh, that Timothy had uh, was something that was noted by the Apostle Paul. He said, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee. He said, Timothy, as I think about you, one of the first things I think about is the faith that you have. Uh, and, and, and that faith and what that faith has produced in your life. And, and, and Paul was very good about commending others for their faith. Uh, he commended the Roman believers. In Romans 1.8, he said, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. To the, right, the believers in Ephesus, Paul wrote these words, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and loved all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. He also mentioned the faith of the believers in Colossae. In Colossians 1.4, he said, Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and love, which you have to all the saints. And then certainly to the believers in Thessalonica, in, in 1 Thessalonians 1.8, Paul said this, for from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad. So that we need not to speak anything. And so Timothy had that kind of faith, that kind of faith that was commended in Rome and Ephesus and Colossae and Thessalonica is now being commended in an individual. Paul said, when I think of you, I think about your faith. It's a special faith. It's called, it, 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 when Paul thinks about this young man, he thinks about this young man's faith. Oh my, 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 we, we would do well. Amen? And I thank God for, for those who excel academically. And we ought to commend them for their academic achievements. And, and, and again, for our graduates, uh, uh, how, how awesome it is to have graduates with us today. Uh, we commend you for passing the tests. And, 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 and going through the, uh, the, the, the coursework that allowed you to obtain degrees. And, and what a wonderful thing that is. Uh, Kenny graduating yesterday uh, from RMU, uh, Emily on Friday from Golden State, and, and others that will graduate. We have uh, a, a high school graduation coming up here uh, in, in just about a month's time. And, and we ought to commend uh, those that have done well academically. We, we commend those that do well athletically. Uh, Avery, uh, your hockey team won, won the championship for the, uh, what, what is the division that you play in? Uh, just whatever it is, amen. We just know Cal, you won, and Avery's on the winning team, amen. Did you score the winning goal? Probably so. I'd say you did, amen. We'll just make you a hero, amen. Uh, you can get his autograph after services. But we, we commend athletes for, the, for their achievements on the, on, on the fields of play, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But can I say, we ought to take that up uh, exponentially and, and start um, lauding people for their faith in God. And, and appreciate them for, for their faith that they live out every day. Paul was saying, Timothy, uh, he's not applauding Timothy uh, uh, for, for any achievement he might have uh, uh, earned in, 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 his, uh, in the business world or in the academic world or in the athletic endeavors, but he's uh, praising T uh, Timothy for his faith. Uh, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that's in thee, he said, Timothy, when I think of you, I think about your faith. And boy, that'd be a good way to look at people. I, I thank God for your faith. I, I, when I think of you, I think about what your faith has allowed you to achieve. I, I thank God for the faith that's allowed you to take your stand. I thank God for the faith that's allowed you to, to be bold. I thank God for your faith that leads you to testify and witness to others. I thank God for your faith that, that, that encourages you to be missions-minded or others-minded. That, that's the kind of thing that we need to get out more in this world uh, is just appreciating people for their faith and, and what their faith encourages them and leads them to do. 
Timothy had a special faith. When I called to remembrance, it was Timothy's faith that, that was noted by Paul. But not only did Timothy have a special faith, the Bible says he had a sincere faith. Look at these words. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith. That word unfeigned there means not counterfeit, not hypocritical. It means real and sincere or genuine. There's another definition for that word unfeigned. It also means being in reality what it appears to be. How easy it is for us to put on a Sunday morning appearance, is it not? We can, we can come and, and step out of our vehicles. Uh, we, we, we might have had a rough morning, amen. We step out of vehicles. It's uh, hi, brother, hi, sister, and you know we're singing the, the songs out of the songbook. But is that faith uh, uh, sincere as we leave this place? Is that faith as sincere on Monday as it, is, uh, as it appears to be on Sunday? But Tom, one of, the, one of the things that breaks my heart is when I hear this set of, uh, of folks, you know, uh, uh, they might be that way on Sunday, but they aren't that way at Monday at work. Amen. Oh, my friend, that's not the kind of faith that, that Timothy was holding on to. He had an unfeigned faith. What you see is what was real, amen? What you see is what you get. His faith was a sincere faith. It wasn't a make-believe. It wasn't a put-on faith. It was not a, 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 an act. That, 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 that Timothy was portraying, it was who he really was. What he was on Sunday was what he was on Monday, and Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday. His faith was real. He was the same uh, and consistent with that faith. So he had a genuine faith, a real faith, being in reality what it appears to be. It was not a simulated faith. It was not a faith that, uh, uh, that assumed or, or were said for the sake of appearance. It was real. It was not hypocritical or pretended. And I think that's what frustrates this world and sickens this world when they look to the church and they see hypocrites. They play church on Sunday but are uh, junkyard dogs on Monday. It ought not to be that way, friends. We've been called to something higher, something better. We've been called to follow, uh, called to follow God as dear children. No, not, to, not to play make-believe or, 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 or pie-in-the-sky, phony baloney stuff. It ought to be real to us. If it's real to us today, real enough to draw us to the church house today, it ought to be real enough to carry us to the workhouse tomorrow. Amen. It ought to be something that's genuine through and through. I understand we don't all dress up in suits and ties every day, and I appreciate the, uh, dressing up for church and everything like that. I appreciate that. But it's more than just the garments of wearing on a certain day of the week. There ought to be the hidden man of the heart, uh, the, the faith uh, the, of who we really are that, that transcends the day, that transcends the place, that, that, is, uh, that, that, that makes us who we are. Amen. We're Christians and we ought not to be able to hide it or turn it off or turn it on. Right. It ought to just be who we are. There ought to be a consistency there, a sincerity there. That word, that, that word sincere, uh, again, comes from two words, sin and Sarah, uh, uh, sin without and wax. And again, I've, I've described this before, but when uh, uh, they were making pottery uh, and, and they put the, the pottery on the wheel and then they put it into the kiln, uh, sometimes pottery would come out there and there'd be cracks in it. Well, to sell that pottery, I, uh, they would sometimes fill the, those cracks in with wax there and color that wax and smooth it over so that the pottery looked intact or in whole. Now, you wouldn't realize that that, that pottery was, uh, was defective until it had to bear water or bear heat. And then the cracks would show up, and it wouldn't be a, a suitable vessel. Well, when a, when a piece of pottery was legitimate and consistent, guess what? There was no wax in it whatsoever. Now, I understand we're sinners. I understand that. But I'll tell you what, it ought to, we, we ought to be Christians and, and not make excuses for our sins. We'd be Christians in spite of our sin. And this world needs to see some genuine, sincere Christians again, doesn't it? May, may we be that. Paul, when he wrote to Timothy, he noticed that his special faith. It was what he thought of when he thought of Timothy, a special faith. He noted his sincere faith. Uh, uh, it was unfeigned, not counterfeit, not hypocritical, but real and sincere. It was not a Sunday show, but it was something that uh, he took with him every day of the week. Amen. Not only did Timothy have a special faith and a sincere faith, but Timothy also had a, uh, a, a, um, a sustained faith. Look at verse 5 again. When I call to remembrance the unfaith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. The faith that is in thee, and I am persuaded that in thee also. So it was sustained faith. Uh, it, it, was in, it was in him. Uh, I mean, it wasn't something that he just professed one time and let it slide away. It wasn't something that he was just known for in the past. It was something that he held on to in the present. Let me just say this to the younger people in here today. What you're getting in Sunday school, what you've gotten growing up, hold on to that. 
let it be a sustained faith that's in you also. If that faith was good enough for you as a, as a younger man, let it be good enough for you as you become an older man. If it was good enough for you as a young lady, let it, let it take you through uh, a, 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 as you become a more mature lady. Let that faith be a part of your life. Uh, and again, mom and dad uh, brought you to Sunday school and they brought you to church. And not so you could toss it out like uh, yesterday's newspaper or, or last week's trash, but something that they uh, prayed and longed that you would hold on to and that, would, that you would model your life around. A sustained faith. You know, the Bible says, uh, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. That's the hope of every Christian parent, that the things we've invested in them and the time we've invested in church and all the youth activities and all the things that we've done around the church would somehow find a lodging place and be sustained and be carried forward, not through the efforts of mom and dad, because there's coming a point when mom and dad's efforts will be uh, of no avail anymore, but it would be picked up and carried by that young person into their adulthood. That's the desire, young people, that what you're getting right now will be something that would sustain you and something that you would sustain on in through your life. Amen. Timothy had it, amen. He was given it as a young man. He got hold of it as a young man, but what, got a, what he got a hold of as a young man was now getting a hold of him as an older man, and it was a sustained faith. Amen. Oh, we need that kind of faith. Because you know what? There are storms out there. We talked about those the last couple weeks, didn't we? Storms that uh, the disciples face, and we, we made this point a couple weeks ago that, uh, uh, that, that storms are a part of the Christian life. They're, they're going to blow, they're, 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 and guess what? They're God-ordained. They're designed to bring us to Him. They're designed to purify us. They're designed to strengthen our faith. God uses storms in our lives to help us to become more like Jesus Christ. What's going to help us in those storms? It's our faith. Remember when they went through that first storm on the Sea of Galilee and Jesus Christ is asleep in the back of the boat? That's, a, that's, that's awesome. He sleeps, it's storming out, it's raining out, and Jesus Christ is asleep in the boat. Master, cares thou not that we perish? Guys, what are you waking me up for? I'm, I created this, I created this sea. Matter of fact, I'm the one that designed the winds. I'm the one that put us in this boat. <sighs> calm down. And everything was calm. Where's your, he said, where's your faith? That's the kind of faith we need, Amen. Jesus Christ is always in the boat. He, he, he's always for those that love him. That faith is what allows us to see the power of our Savior and the prerogative of our Savior and, and the provisions of our Savior, even when the storm's beating down upon us, even when we can see no way out. Guess what? We've got a Savior. A sustained faith. A faith that doesn't just come and go uh, with every wind uh, and, and, and every situation, every circumstance. But it's a faith that's consistent throughout life. It grows and, and we make investment in, in, in investments in it and it strengthens us. Amen. Timothy had a sustained faith. And, and James even hit on this a little bit. Let me just say this about a sustained faith. It, it's not a faith, it's a faith of profession. But it's a faith that is put on display in the things that we do and say. The psalmist said it this way. He said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, the things that I say, Lord, may they be pleasing in your sight. How, how are my words going to be pleasing in God's sight? Well, my faith is real to me. It's going to affect the way I speak. If a man can't bridle his tongue, the Bible says that man's religion is vain or that man's faith is vain. It's empty. It's worthless. If my faith is not affecting my speech, guess what? I'm proving that my faith isn't really what it's cracked out to be or what I think it is. Amen. But not only the words that I say, but the deeds that I do. We were, as, as, as uh, uh, when, when Christ saved us, when uh, we were saved by placing our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says in, in, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, uh, for we are, created in good works unto, uh, we are uh, created in good works unto Jesus Christ, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. And God designed us to be a good work in his hands. James says it this way, A man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. He says in, in, in verse number 20 of the same chapter, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? We can go around all the day long saying, I've got faith, but I'll tell you what, it's, it's, the proof's in the pudding, as it were. The, the proof is in the living. The, the proof is in the doing. It's not around to delude ourselves thinking, well, I'm, I'm, I'm good, I, I've got it, okay? Where's the evidence of that? What, 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 what is backing up that profession? What evidence is there of these, thi or, or, or of these things? Timothy had that, that faith. And again, if you even look through Timothy's life, his salvation was genuine. Why? He stayed the course. In, in this epistle here, uh, this is Paul's going away letter. And he said, I'm, uh, he, he's going to be martyred here in just a little bit. 
And he's writing to Timothy and saying, Timothy, I need you to come to me. Why? Timothy's still on board, amen? Timothy's still in the fight. Not everybody could say that. There was a man that, uh, that was probably a, 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 a companion of Timothy named Demas. And Paul had to say about Demas, Demas hath, forth- hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. He's departed. Kreskin's departed. All these other departed. But Timothy, you're still with me. Come. Bring the books and the parchment, but come to me. Why? His faith kept him in the game. It was a sustained faith. We might ask ourselves, what's, gonna, what, what, what's the threshold of me quitting? What would cause me to walk away on my faith? Others have. I want to stay until the end. I want to be like the Apostle Paul. I've finished my course. Kept the faith. If it's going to be a faith that's kept, it's going to have to be a sustained faith. It's going to be something that I invest in. How does faith come? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It's going to be an attachment to the Word of God as I read it and meditate upon it. As I desire to live it out in my life, that is how it's going to be sustained and maintained in my life. If we were to take a jump over to chapter number 3 of, of 2 Timothy, we'd find in verse number 15 these words, that Timothy's faith was a saving faith, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Thank God for every Bible lesson ever taught by Heritage Baptist Church. Thank God for every Sunday school, every junior church, every vacation Bible school, every Wednesday night peewee and patch program where Jesus Christ and his truth and the word of God is taught. Amen. Why? Because it's making our students wise unto who God is and the plan of salvation that he has written out and drawn out for us uh, that's made available to us through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a saving faith, amen? It's not a faith that just shows us our sin and leaves us hanging with no, with no hope, but it shows us not only our condition, but also uh, uh, the provision that God has made to us uh, of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad. Not only does God's Word show us how bad we are and how hopeless we are and how condemned we are, but it also offers us a way of escape, and that way of escape is through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Without Him, we have no hope. Without Him, we have no help. And these are the scriptures that Timothy was taught. These are the scriptures that Timothy learned and memorized and put in his heart that saved his soul. Timothy was not saved because he was a good young man. He was saved because the scriptures that were taught to him as a young man took hold in his heart and saved his soul. So it's a saving faith. But can I say this morning, and you say, Pastor Ross, this isn't a real Mother's Day sermon. Well, it is now. Let me take it to my last point. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first where? In thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. This faith was a shared faith. Moms, one of the second greatest gift you've given to your children is life. So, Pastor, the second greatest gift I've given my children is life? Yeah. Because if you haven't shared with them eternal life, you haven't given them the greatest gift yet. Timothy, I, I, boy, when I think about you, I think about your faith. Your, your, your faith is a, is a special faith, Timothy. It, it causes you to stand out from your peers. Timothy, you've got a sincere faith. I know you're the real deal. You're genuine. You're, you're uh, in season and out of season. You're, 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 you're consistent. Regardless of the day, regardless of the place, regardless of the crowd, you're consistent. Timothy, your faith has sustained you. You had it as a little boy. Now as a young man, you still got it. That's, that's great. Timothy, that faith has saved your soul, and you know the scriptures testify of, of the genuineness of your salvation. Praise God for the salvation you got and the saving faith that you hold. But Timothy, please don't forget where you got it. Please don't forget who handed it down to you. Mom, I want to say this. You've given life to, to other human beings. Thank God. That, that, uh, wonderful. That's the plan of God. But the greatest gift you can give to your children is that saving faith that not only can save their souls, but can also give them uh, the ability to have an abundant life as well as eternal life now. That unfeigned faith that you have, Timothy, I saw first in your grandma Lois and your mother Eunice. It's interesting. Uh, uh, Eunice, or, or Lois's name means better. And, and Eunice's name means good victory. 
And I think it really testifies of the, the character of these two ladies. Uh, uh, Lois, amen, was a godly lady. She was better. And I think, moms, uh, uh, again, uh, you have the potential to, to, to better those around you. And, and Eunice, good victory uh, uh, coming to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and taking that faith and, and sharing that with her young son. Now, in, in Eunice's case, uh, Eunice uh, uh, was a, a believer. The Bible tells us about her, her faith in Acts chapter 16, verse 1, when Paul was visiting. The Bible says in Acts 16, 1, Then he came to Derbe and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed, but his father was a Greek. So what do we see about, what do we see about Eunice? She was a believer. She had a son who was a believer, but she did not have a husband who was a believer. And in spite of that, uh, in spite of that, what we might call a handicap, in spite of not having one in the home to help with the spiritual education uh, of that young man, she persevered and she overcame the obstacles and she loved her son enough to testify to him and tell him and invest in him all those stories. And not only was, not only was her example to Timothy something else, but also his uh, grandma Lois also stood by there and testified of these things. That, that, that God is real, and the Bible is true, and Jesus Christ does love, and can save, and, and, and was able to pass this down to this young man, Timothy, to the point where God took this young man, and his precious faith, and his sustained faith, and his special faith, and raised him up, and he became one of the Apostle Paul's uh, greatest assistants in the ministry. Amen. Where did it start? It started with that, sh that, 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 that faith that was a shared faith. And to our moms here today, Again, the greatest gift you can give to your child, uh, to those that call you mom, is that faith that has saved your soul and that faith that can save their soul as well. This shared faith, Paul mentions it this way, the, the faith that dwelt first in thy grandmother and thy mother. He, uh, uh, in, in 2 Timothy 3.14, he says this to Timothy, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. Where did he learn those things from? Where did he learn that doctrine from? Where did he learn about God from? Where did he learn about Jesus Christ from? He learned about them at the feet of his mother and his grandmother. They shared their faith with him. Not only did they nurture him physically, not only did they care for his needs physically, but they also took care of him spiritually. They shared their faith with him. Uh, again, continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. Here, here's the end of that verse. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Timothy, every time you examine your faith, every time you rejoice in your salvation, don't forget your mom. Don't forget your grandma who shared that faith with you. They have a special place in your life. Why? Because not only did your mom bring you into this world, but she also brought you into uh, 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 an awareness and a relationship with Almighty God that's going to carry you into the next. And that shared faith is what I'd like to say this morning. Moms, you, you brought life into this world. But let me just say this. Let's bring eternal life into this world as well as we share that faith with our, the little ones that look up and call you mom. That, that, what an incredible opportunity. Nobody will have the, the heart of the child as dear as a mom can. And I understand. Maybe your mom wasn't a godly lady. But, but in spite of these things, you can know God. Anybody can make an excuse. Why well, didn't have a godly example as a mom in the home? Then be the godly example. Start something new. Start, start something genuine and real for those that follow you. That shared faith. Timothy became a, a giant for God. Why? Because he had some great investments. He had some great investors. The example of his mom Eunice and his grandma Lois would serve as a steady reminder, a constant reminder that his faith was something that was handed to him, was shared with him. I would hope, moms, that today you would realize again, as I said, how precious you are to bring life into this world, to have nurtured and, and cared for the physical needs of, uh, of, of, of children. But I also hope you'd realize what a precious position you're in to care for the spiritual needs of those who look up and call you mom, to invest in them the truths that will help them to know God, to walk with God, to love God, to be saved by God as well. I have a little something I'd like to do, and I know there are a number of young people in here this morning, and, and I hope that you'll appreciate this. Um, Beth, if you want to get that for me real quick. To the young people in this room this morning that have a godly mom, you ought to thank her for sharing her faith with you. And there are several of you in here this morning that not only have a godly mom, but you also have a godly, a godly grandma. 
just like Timothy had. You got to take time to thank God that they shared their faith with you and brought their faith. I have some ladies I'd like to honor here, and you'll forgive me as a pastor, but I'd like to do this. And when I thought of Lois and 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 and, and Eunice, I thought about my children. And Bobby and, and Emily, would you get over here real quick? You want to hand these out real quick? Mr. Bobby and Becca and Emily, you have a godly mom. And you have godly grandmas that are here in church with you. You have your Lois and your Eunice. I never thought I'd call Tammy Eunice. <laughs> she didn't hear me, so don't tell her. But I'd like you to take those to your godly influences and think about that. Derek, you've got a godly mom and a godly grandma, just like Timothy had. Avery and Alicia, you've got a godly mom and a godly grandma. Can I go around the room? Lonnie, you've got a godly mom and a godly grandma. I don't mean to leave anybody out. Where's Libby and Vicky and all you? I mean, all the young people in here. You have what Timothy had. A godly mom and a godly grandma. Go ahead and honor those. Just, it should be something that we appreciate. Timothy, let me just say this to our young people here this morning. You have a godly mom, a godly grandma. There's no reason for you not to turn out like Timothy turned out. You have the advantages he had. Appreciate the godly influences in your life, especially a godly mom. Timothy took the investments made in him, and it made all the difference in his life, but not only just in his life, but in the life of the Apostle Paul. When, when Paul was left alone, he knew he could count on Timothy. When Paul was at the end of his life, he knew that there was one young man he could count on. That man was Timothy. But where did it start for Timothy? It didn't start just with Timothy. It started with his mom and his grandma. Where is it going to start for your children? Mom, you, maybe your mom, pass that down. I wish every young person could hear this and consider that has a, a, a mom in church, a grandma in church, and just realize what a godly heritage, a goodly heritage could do for them. I think of the Schieffer kids over there too. You've got a godly mom and a godly grandma. I mean, the Irwins, I mean, we're, we've been blessed. Let's hear it for mom. What a wonderful position she occupies. What a precious position she can occupy. Not only to bring life, but to bring eternal life into the awareness of her children. Let's not forget Timothy's faith either. What was it again? It was a special faith, a sincere faith, a sustained faith, a saving faith, but it was also a shared faith. Let, let, let's, let's exercise our gifts that way. Jesus Christ is the object of that faith. Let's never forget that. And he is worthy of all of our praise and our admiration as we think of him. And all he's done for us, we take time to share our faith with those around us as well.